I've been doing a lot of thinking recently about the cost of e-mountain bikes. You know, they can wildly vary from 500 euros all the way up to 16,000 euros. But where does price point meet capability? You know, in some instances, they're using the same motor, same battery, and same frame materials, right? Well, in this video, I'd like to explore and unravel the mysteries behind the best priced, best legit off-road e-mountain bikes and their capabilities. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's clarify what I mean by legit e-mountain bike. That's not an e-bike, it's an e-mountain bike. And in my eyes, legit means A, having a battery and motor system that's gonna be able to deal with off-road riding. B, having components that are durable enough and are gonna be able to deal and not bail on your ride. And C, having a frame design and suspension design that's actually gonna complement your off-road adventures rather than hinder them. Now, trust me, there's a sea of e-bikes out there, but some really aren't cut out for the trail and others might just get lost along the way. Now, hold up. You remember this wonderful rig that Rich purchased off eBay for a mere 600 pounds, the Allegro. Now, this is the kind of junk you really wanna steer clear of. The price may seem desirable, but the phrase, you pay for what you get, really comes to mind. You may end up paying for something that's gonna be as useful as a screen door in a submarine. Now, why should you avoid these budget blunders? Several reasons, really. Comfort, reliability, and of course, safety. So, picture this. Suspension that's a bit more of a suggestion than, say, a feature. Burdening you with a bouncy bike that's gonna give you far less control rather than more. V-brakes or cable brakes that are gonna go AWOL in the rain. Tires that give you the grip of a banana peel and tear. Electronics that are gonna go haywire in the smallest of tumbles. Let's not forget the battery fire horror stories. Safety is paramount. So what's the key to finding a budget-friendly gem? Well, let's break it down for you. But remember today, we're gonna to be looking at off-the-shelf bikes. So you're after a reasonable price, a size that suits, a battery that's fixed and gives you a good range, a motor that's gonna be able to give you the drive that you need, no matter what the type, hub or mid-drive. And don't forget, geometry. Geometry that's gonna be able to be suitable to tackle the terrain that the bike is aimed at. In terms of motors, there's two different options, hub drive and mid-drive. Now, delving into the world of hub drive, where the prices are a lot friendlier, but there's some key trade-offs. Now, these bikes don't climb like mountain goats, unfortunately, which is largely down to the gearing within the hub drive. And to be honest, you often find these on hardtails, which can be quite limiting. Now, on the flip side, you've got mid-drive motors, which are much more versatile all-rounder. Frequently, they have more power, better weight balance because of all the weight being centered in the middle of the bike. They also have a greater range of different motor options, a much more versatile ride experience with a much more natural support feel, and they've got so much new tech. It's a trail's best buddy. But brace yourself, they do generally come with a higher price point. Now, let's meet some of these bargain beauties. First up, we have the Decathlon EST100, the bargain champ at 999 pounds. An aluminum hardtail that's hub driven with a down tube mounted battery and around 100 mil of suspension travel on the front. Now it's a great bike for light off-road you know, jaunts and uses. It's got a 42 newton meter motor with a 380 watt hour battery. Now that's gonna get you around 30 kilometers of easy cruising. However, watch out for mechanical disc brakes and a limited adjustment fork. Next in line, we've got the Caliber Kinetic T2, priced at around 1,500 pounds. Now, this bike is very similar in its setup as the Decathlon EST100, but with a few improvements like hydraulic brakes, improved geometry, and a 29er wheel set. The hub-driven powerhouse offers a solid riding experience. So this is where mid-drive motors can really open up the field to a wider variety of travel, geometry, frame design, and price. If you want to get up bigger and steeper terrain, let's start talking mid-drive bikes then. The Voodoo Bizango E is a gem of a hardtail, coming in at around 2,299 GBP. It's got some great solid basics, hydraulic brakes, and a 75 newton meter motor paired with a 418 watt hour battery. This makes it a solid trail contender. I believe though it's really worth going that extra yard for a full suspension bike. 
The next up, we've got the Decathlon Stylus AM29 coming at 3799. It's bringing the full suspension, aluminium frame, goodness. With 150mm travel front and rear, running full 29 wheel set, it's got a Bosch Performance CX motor and a 65 watt hour battery, giving you plenty of range. Now, it's a great little bike, but there's a few more sophisticated ones on our list, such as Canyon's Neuronon 6. Coming in at 3,649, this bike has an absolutely killer spec. 130 mil Fox forks, full 29 inch wheels, aluminium frame. Pair that with Shimano's EP600 motor and a bigger range battery. You're gonna have plenty of power to be able to ride throughout the whole of a day. Next up, we've got a bike that proved its worth and its capabilities in deepest dark of Scotland with Steve most recently, the Giant Stance E Plus 2. Now that comes in at 3,499 GBP. It's got a great spec using Shimano's 10-speed link glide system for extra durability and power. It's also using 140mm fork, 120mm rear shock, and using Giant's own sync drive system. It's even got the potential to add a 250 watt hour range extender. Now the best thing about this bike is how well balanced it is and the suitability for the trails it's intended to ride. It may be short travel, but the geometry really pushes it forwards. Now, hold on to your helmets. We're introducing the Cube Stereo Hybrid 14625. Bit of a mouthful, but that is our only carbon frame bike in the lineup. So it's running 150 mil front travel and 140 mil rear with a carbon front triangle, aluminium rear triangle. This bike is ready to dominate all the trails at your trail center. It's a ripper. It's got a great spec, great geometry, and it's super capable. Finally up, we have the other bike that Steve took to deepest, darkest Scotland and brought him back out the other side, the Vitus e Mythique VR. This bike is stealing the spotlight at 3,299 pounds for the big spec that it comes with. 170mm travel up front and 160mm on the rear. This long travel champ is going to give you that confidence to go ride some of the bigger hit stuff. It's got a Bafang motor and its thoughtful suspension design always ensure a really thrilling ride. The Vitus e Mythique VR is really pushing the envelope in terms of price to performance quality ratio. Remember guys, it's not about breaking the bank, it's about breaking the bike that... No, not... <laughs> <laughs> Remember guys, it's not about breaking the bank, but it's about finding the right bike to push you to the next level. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments down below. Good, bad, what you enjoyed, what you didn't, and I'd love to hear if you've got any more budget options. See you later guys.